possible responses to somebody trying to pull you off balance. So I'm grabbing the shoulder here. He's going to try and draw me out. No, don't use your hands. Remember, I wasn't using my hands. You don't get to cheat. Okay, so one is obviously not go. But why would I do that? If he did pull, I could just let go. Because if I can feel that pull, he's leaving himself open. That's hunky dory with me. The other thing that you would do, since judo, you're going to get scored on getting the, the point, okay, is follow it in if they're pulling. I could do both of those. Okay? So if I'm, he's feeling this, wasn't he nice about holding on? Okay? You wouldn't really let me drag you. You'd either add to it by extending. Yeah, see how you collapsed it? Mm. You, if you extend first into my pull, now it's easier to make that move. Mm. And you went right with me. But you could also just let go. Ha! <laughs> so what I want is to go inside this and gather it so that when I move, you're moving before you quite understood why. Right. Now here's the next contact place, and I don't want to do anything here because you can fight it. Okay. So it's going around your power. So if that happened pretty quickly, you're there. Okay, the basic version, just like what we were doing this morning, lots of footwork. All your basics involve a lot of body movement. So to get the draw here, I would move out here, then I'd rotate around, okay? Eventually you can do this with virtually no footwork. You know? He comes to grab me, boom, he's already over there. Boom. And I didn't move my feet. Okay, in Saltomi Sensei's book, there's a picture of two guys on a log bridge over the chasm. That's really the essence of what we're trying to do eventually. Because if I'm on that log bridge over the chasm, I can't be the guy moving off line all the time. So eventually, he's the guy moving off the line, and I just own the space. Aikido got a build as the art where you move off the line and lead the energy, and it caused a lot of Aikido people, not the Tomiki people actually, but it caused a lot of Aikido people to think that you escaped from the original attack and then at some point reconnected and threw them, which is just absolutely ridiculous, and it is not Kazushi on contact. You know, you come with a punch and I just always am going over here. I'm not saying that there are times when you might want to evade, especially if there's another attacker coming. Maybe that was the proper response, but you notice that I didn't do anything to him. So eventually, I think the mindset that you really want to have to learn to do connection work is this is my space. You come with that punch and this is my space, and this is my space, and this is my space, and you're the guy going all over the place. But you don't start the beginners with that. You can't. You have to teach them the geometry, as Sensei was talking about this morning. Okay? So we've done a couple things on the EQ curve. Okay? I want to do this one. Give me two. A lot of people will, bad IQ people talk about hip power. Okay? He's strong here because he can set up a rectangle. One, two, three, I'm four. I control only one side of this rectangle. And so, if I try and turn this way, I'm pulling here and pushing here. If I try and turn the other way, which is usually, if you've ever seen a rondori where a guy gets grabbed and then he's sitting in the middle of three people going. <laughs> he's running into everything all over the place. So, instead, Pick one of these hands to be neutral and it won't move. And then release the other hip. And now you're not running into him. Okay? So if he came to grab me like that, I'm already doing that. He's already shifting the moment he touched. Okay? And basically the way I think of it is, it's like when they first hit you here, put your hands on the hips and push a little. Okay, when they hit this, both hips are engaged equally. And so if he's pushing, it's going into me and into the ground. So then when rotation happens, if it's proper rotation, it's not going to be on your center axis. I am not turning around my spine. I'm turning around either the left or the right pivot point. 
So if I pivot on this hip and let this hip go, it creates a low pressure zone on this side that he falls into. And if I turn the other one, so what am I doing? I'm vacating the space. His energy comes in to grab and I've already shifted him. Okay? So in this case, we're using the shoulders, but it's, it's exactly the same on the hips and the hips are doing it. So here, get your energy inside this attack. So take this and go, of course, this is where all the strikes are. Great, okay. So when I do this, you can feel I'm underneath you a little bit. And then when I release here, and then this is just touching. But as this enters, it's like a ratchet. If he tries to return now, I filled the space. It's not pushing, it's just filling the space right. as he goes. Then if I drop here, so if we were a little faster, he'd touch and I'd already gone here. Now he's up. Okay? And I might complete it. Or if he's really decided to fight me, I'll let him release back to the start. And then this becomes really easy. You know, and it's like, that's all up to you. Right? But the moment he touches, he's got, oh, okay. The rest of it's easy. Pick the technique you want to do. Okay? So start with, and first, try and turn on your spine and make sure it doesn't work with your partner. I do not want him giving it to me. I want him really strong. Then enter inside, pick a neutral axis, and draw the other one. Exercise like this. I keep telling everybody, take this energy. You know, judo people want to grab it. You don't need to. But you do need to connect. Take this and put it out there behind him. Mm -hmm. You see him shift? Just that. Now I'm connected and I have my energy inside the energy of his attack. So this is a crutch. Because when I think about taking this energy and shooting it out behind him, I am taking my intent and putting it not on his attack, but actually behind him. So he's actually enclosed in my bubble, so to speak. Remember I did the dynamic sphere in the bubble people? If you can think about the bubble not as the physical reach, but as where their intent goes, and they're creating this circle of intent, okay, 360, so that, and he doesn't feel me acting on him here because my intent is actually elsewhere, okay? If I collapse my field and I think about him, look at us fighting. But if I get bigger than he is and just let this rotation happen, he's moving before he quite understands what's going on. Now here's the other cool thing. If you've got this, behind you, put your hands on your shoulders. This isn't just, oh, this is how I deal with this attack, but if there's no, give me a little grab on the gear. If you have this integrated and moving, Everything's moving. He'll be moving too. Back right there. Won't matter where he's touching. Okay? Grab. Yep. So if I have this going on, and you come over and grab me here, if you're really moving in an integrated fashion, if this is going forward, he's going back that way. Because it's whole, what Perota sense they called whole body movement. Okay? Dan Harden's say, if one thing moves, everything moves. You're not moving in pieces. It's not the hand and then the hip. You're not, it's everything. And so it doesn't matter where they're touching. Where they're touching creates a particular technique. Okay? So if a guy's grabbing my shoulder and I rotate this way, it might turn into certain things. If he grabs my hips and I turn this way, it might turn into other things. But I'm doing the same thing. I am just rotating. If, Anytime you're dealing with one person, if someone else came up and grabbed you somewhere else, there should be movement instantly if you're really integrated in your structure. Okay? We just happen to be working the front right now. Okay? It would be no different. If I just had him to the rear, I wouldn't need to be entering to the front the same way. I would actually go in underneath him here. Feel me enter? Yep. And then I'd be doing the same rotation to move him. Okay? 
if I have both of you, it gets a little tricky because I have to enter to both. <laughs> and so this is where you get 360. I really have to kind of go, all right, there I'm behind you, there I'm behind you. Now if I move, 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 move. This, this takes some training to, to be able to put it in. So you start with one person. And then you can add people. You know, you see the senseis when they, you know, the big guys when they want to do cool demos, they'll have eight people and they move them effortlessly. It's really cool. But what you need to understand is if you really know what this is going on, it's easy because that five, six, seven, eight people is no dip, no more difficult than one because you're not moving eight people; you're moving you. What you're doing, in what, in, in, if it's IT, what you're doing is giving direction to the energy of the attack. And so it doesn't matter if there's five of them or six of them or if the guy's really strong because you are not operating on that level. A strong guy, he's still going to give it direction and you're going to allow that direction and you want to be relaxed. I mean, the goal, I think, one of the teachers I trained with, and I was trying to remember who it was, and I can't remember. I have appropriated this, and now I can't tell you where I got it. I usually try to tell you where I get stuff. But he said, what you're really trying to do is allow, be relaxed enough and sensitive enough to let the other guy tell you how he'd like to fall down. Okay? So, on this one, let's take a look at another pivot. Let's go palm to palm. And this will be... But we'll work on that seam that I was talking about. How can you tell if you're connected to the center? If you're not, you only move their arm. And a lot of people, you know, they have, they're strong. They have bad Aikido, so they'll move this, move this, move this, and eventually they'll move. But if what you saw was the, a point of contact move a lot first, and then only eventually did they go, it's totally beatable. When it's right, what moves first is over there. The body moves first, okay? So right here, we already started with this. The elbows go in underneath. It's no different here just because the hand's in a different position. The elbow goes on underneath. This all goes in here, and there's the shoulder. Now I'm going to go across to that shoulder by turning my core a little bit. And then what I want to do is allow this to start to rotate. Same rotation we did before, but he's got a new contact point. And when it crosses the original line, let it fall. And when this is fast, it brings them into that kick. Okay? So we're going to be nice about it and leave out the knee. It's like most of the time in Aikido, we make a hole and allow them to fall into the hole. In the old stuff, there was something in that hole when you fell into it. It was highly unpleasant. So be solid. If I push, if I try and lift the hand, nothing happens. But if I can go in underneath it and up and over around and then let it fall. And in this case, usually I step back so his head doesn't hit the knee because that's actually where his head is headed, is right towards that knee. So the nice thing is move the knee and let him. So, And he look, what am I doing? When I get him up on his edge like this, why isn't he falling back here? Because I'm supporting him. So I'm, I'm, I'm simply setting up a situation where now I'm using him for support. Or he's using me for support. And so the throw is simply take the support away. Stop holding him up. Don't throw him. If this is done a little faster, it starts to look like a pulse. And that's enough. Really strong? The stronger they are, this is all waves. Everything we do is a spiral or a wave. Okay? You know in physics they talk about a wave needs a medium to propagate. Somebody who's really strong and rigid is a wonderful. <laughs> yeah. That's why it's so hard to do stuff on the system guys because they don't have any tension. And getting a wave to flow through them is very difficult. So when they're strong, you see that? Look at it, it goes up, hits the floor through his structure, and rebounds. 
So what if I just let it rebound into a different place? Okay. Now, for most of you, that's above your pay grade. So get, get the bigger one. Take it in underneath them, across to the other shoulder. Turn enough that this comes to the original line and drop it. And then he can roll or just take a front. Okay. Not inside my attack at all. So if you started to move, move around, move it. All you got is the hand. You've got to take this energy, that energy from your knees, and the higher energy in and come in underneath. There's the shoulder. Mm -hmm. Now you're in. Now take it around behind me to that shoulder. Okay, now let the hand keep rotating and let it fall to your center. Mm -hmm. Sit down, you don't have any problem. <laughs> <laughs> so if you have trouble, if you have trouble, first thing to check, you know, you're always supposed to not blame your partners, but it is possible for your partner to give you crappy attack. <laughs> okay? There's, there's the, I'm the 300 pound partner, I get the white belt female, and I go, <laughs> okay, that's the real butthead. Yeah. <laughs> then there's the Seattle passive aggressive. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh and then when she starts to move, I counter. <laughs> so you give your partner nothing, and then every time they start to move, you counter. It's true. It's true. It's true. Okay. I actually was at Rocky Mountain Summer Camp a few years ago when a guest instructor from Japan was there. And I, I was sympathetic to him, because here he is, he's a Rokudan, and he's in a bunch of strangers, and you know, you gotta show the flag. You know, it's, it's like, so I get paired with him, and he did that to me. He gave me the passive aggressive. He didn't give me shit. Except that I knew what he was doing. So, let me do it with you. Come in here and give me a little bit of a grab with nothing. So my response was, nothing. <laughs> I sit here looking at him, and then after an uncomfortably long little period, <laughs> he started coming in to try and find, no, more subtle than that, just a little bit, just a little bit, just a little bit, just a little bit. You feel what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. As he tried to find where my center was, I kept giving way, and eventually he went off balance, and then he got a big smile on his face, because he realized I wasn't going to play the game he wanted to play. And I eventually got, it took me 30 seconds to get Kazushi on him, because he didn't want to give me anything. Okay? But I knew what he was going to do. He was, the moment I tried to give that direction, because there was no connection, he was going to counter me. Okay? And that's a game. That's fine. I've been training a long time. If somebody wants to play that game with me, I have my own stuff I can do. That's a terrible thing to do to your partner when they're trying to learn because they just think they're doing it wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay. The other thing is is the moment they start getting it. Okay. So come in underneath me, forward from your heart a little more, 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 more. There. You feel the, my feet through this structure? Mm -hmm. That's a pretty good way to tell if you're touching. A Kata Sensei says touch their spine, but I like to go in a little deeper, just a little deeper. There. If you pushed harder, you'd start to feel it building up because you're, you're touching the floor through my structure. Mm -hmm. Now, at that point, that's when you have to start rotating. So you come in, more, in, 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 more, 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 there. Now, elbows and knees come in even more underneath me. Come forward, 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 forward. There's the shoulder. You see this? Look at this. She's actually able to hold me up from that position. Now, as that's happening, rotate around the middle finger. Let the hand rotate. Don't give way, though. Keep pushing. Constant forward pressure. And now she's got this one. She actually, we did a different spiral, but it's the same one. It's actually the one we did with Sensei this morning. Okay. That's being a good partner. I felt it. When it wasn't right, I helped her get, a, get it a little more right. But what people do, especially if you're training with competitors, because they're, they're, their default setting is to fuck up what you're doing because that's how they fight. And so the moment she hits the shoulder, I release the hip. She can't learn that way because I just reorganize. 
And slow, when we're doing slow technique, you can always reorganize. You know? So, you need to take the ukemi. I'm not going to give it to her. She doesn't get it right. She's going to feel that she's pushing on me or pulling on me. It's not going to go. But when she gets it, take the ukemi because what you want to do with this stuff is uke is allow the spiral they're running to express itself fully through your body so they can see it. It's like, if I move this hip, wow, that shoulder moved. And if I take my head in like this, oh, they went down on their butt. You have to allow them to see the effect of all this stuff. And, you know, if you train with Dan Harden, this is a man who, if he didn't want you to move, you would not move. If he grabbed you and decided that you weren't going to move, you will not move at all. And yet he takes lovely ukemi. Uh, he was at a seminar and he took class when some of us were teaching. And he just did the class. And afterwards, one of the things like he said, well, you know, see, I'm not a bad guy. <laughs> you know? And I said, the thing I was watching the whole time was how much fun your partners were having. That's the mark of a great partner, is if your partner has fun. That they feel like they got a lot out of working with you. Because anybody who's any good can go in and show somebody who's junior to them what a bunch of losers they are. Who <laughs> 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 You call yourself a... Yondan, ha, I laugh at you. Who cares? That's just a big, that's just a big ego trip. And the fact of the matter is, there's somebody that can do that to me. Yeah. You know, I train with people who can do that to me, effortlessly. And so, you know, train with people who are over your head. That'll keep you humble. And then when you train with people who are junior to you, invest in their getting better. And that's how the system gets passed on in some kind of quality way. And I, that was not, in fact, how I was trained. But I'm trying to make things better. Okay? Do I have like three minutes? Three minutes, you got it. I want to show you something about dropping. I got this from Popkin Sensei. And it was one of the best, best things I ever had. Okay, so you get somebody a little screwed up. And now it's time to take them down. And what everybody tries to do is drop from the contact point back. So this is what tries to go down first. See my butt go out, my shoulders go forward. And if they're really solid, the moment you start pushing there, you'll feel your shoulder trying to pop. What he said was, is you drop from you out. I connect here, and what drops is me. So my knees and elbows and spine start going to the floor. And the last thing that goes to the floor is the hand. So if I drop this way, okay? So even when you see some of these ones where I'm resting here, he did a punch, and I'm in, ah, in here, and I want to go down. This drops, shoulders drop, elbow drops. The last thing that goes down is the hand, and the hand is only going down because it's following him down. It's not making him go down. Okay? So just try this. Have them stand here like they did a punch. Walk up here. Allow this. To, I'm not going to put any power here. I'm going to put a lot of energy into the hole here from my palm. And see how this is going around once again? Going around this. And as that's happening, drop back here. And you can take them all the way to the floor that way. Okay, go ahead. Drop and into it. But when we first learned this, you'd get the guys didn't understand it. And they're, they're chopping. Uh, and it's annoying. But you notice what his response was? Yeah. It hurts. But actually, if a guy's any good and you chop that arm, they're into the second thing. I'm actually not doing that. Okay? Hold. Now, it's Chris and I'm 300 pounds, so he needs help. Would you come out and hold this hand? Both hands. <coughs> yeah, that's better. Very good. <laughs> How much pressure do you feel on the arm? I mean, there's some. Some, but it did not increase dramatically. 
And I move both of them. I start sinking into That's what you're, yeah. you're shooting like for. If I had put my power into that, they would have buried me. Sure. Okay? So you're always going around the power. You're using your core, both horizontally and vertically, which, of course, eventually creates a sphere. And a lot of times in Aikido, we're expressing that with our hands up here and stuff, and people get caught by this. It's not here. It's here. The hand is expressing that. It's giving direction to it, but the power's all back here. Okay? So hopefully that'll be useful for everybody.